Okay, so we know about condenser microphones. The third most common type that you'll find in recording studios is the ribbon microphone. Now, ribbon microphones work very similar to dynamic microphones by the means of using a magnet to make this um, electromagnetic induction. However, instead of a coil of wire surrounding the magnet, the ribbon microphone makes use of a really thin uh, metal ribbon. And this is placed in between two magnets. Now, because this metal ribbon has to be so thin, it's really sensitive to vibrations. So, ribbon microphones are known for capturing high frequencies really, really well. Unlike the dynamic microphone, it needs the power and the sound pressure level from the sound wave from the instrument to move the diaphragm. The ribbon microphone is really sensitive to sound waves. Also, because it is suspended in between two magnets, the ribbon microphone typically has a biodirectional or figure of eight polar pattern. So we can see that here. We can see how a ribbon microphone works. We've got the microphone housing and sat within that, we've got two magnets. On this diagram, those magnets are blue. Suspended in between those two magnets is the actual ribbon itself. When that moves from the sound wave, so that ribbon basically is the microphone's diaphragm. When that moves, it sends an electric signal via electromagnetic induction from the magnets and that's converted through the means of a transformer and it sends it down as an electric signal. The ribbon is electrically connected to the microphone's output and it's its vibration within the magnetic fields that generates an electric signal. Because the ribbon is actually open from the front and the back, that's why we get this biodirectional pattern, that figure of eight pattern. It means it rejects sound sources from the side. It doesn't like recording sound from the side, but from the front and the back of the actual microphone, you're gonna get a really strong signal. So, some of the advantages and disadvantages. Well, ribbon microphones have a relatively flat frequency response. They're not tailored to a specific frequency range. They've got a low, mid and high but we need to remember that they're not good with high SPLs, high sound pressure levels. They don't like really loud, sudden sounds. So you typically wouldn't use a ribbon microphone on a kick drum, on a snare, on a guitar amp. It's more likely to break the actual ribbon itself. Ribbon microphones need no external or internal power. They don't need phantom power. They don't need that 48 volts. Some of the old producers and engineers, they often consider that the ribbon microphone adds a sense of warmth to the, a recording. And this could be to a slight swell in the low and mid frequencies. However, um, your modern ribbon microphone has a relatively flat response. Some of the disadvantages though, are that the ribbon microphone is considerably more expensive than the dynamic and the condenser. You're talking for, say, something like Arroyo R121, about $1,000, so about £900. They're not very good for live on-location recording because they're so sensitive. The slightest noise from, say, um, the wind or a gust of air, that will be picked up. And probably the biggest fault with ribbon microphones is that they are so fragile. They are so prone to the ribbon snapping because of high sound pressure levels. These microphones also demonstrate something called the proximity effect. So that's basically, um, let's say a, a vocalist, as they move closer to the microphone, we see this boost in low frequencies. When you put the sound source so it could be vocals, could be guitar, could be um, a violin playing, for example. As that sound source moves closer to the actual microphone, we get a, a boost in low frequencies, and that's called the proximity effect. 